What's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Everything 9000 podcast. What are you saying, Amit? I'm good. It's bloody freezing. It's freezing, man, but I tell you what. Mid-April. This, this rap verse is hotting up, bro. Mm, I've, I've seen bits and bobs about it. I feel like, do you know what? I'm a proper hip-hop rap head. I love it. I love that shit. To the extent that I've watched documentaries on, like, the origins of hip-hop and rap mm-hmm. and where beats come from, the areas that have popped. This is something that, even if you're a casual rap listener or a casual Drake listener, casual J. Cole listener, casual Kendrick listener, mm. you've tapped in at some point. I think it's quite good in a sense that you don't really listen with that music because, you know, what, I think there are a lot of our viewers as well that just listen to Punjabi music, for yeah, instance. I'm basically, I'm not mainstream, you know. It's nothing don't, to do I don't, with I don't, I, don't, I don't do pop. It's not pop, it's hip hop rap. Right. But anyway, I just need to, I need to give you the lowdown, man. Explain yeah. the situation to you so you can understand the levels. I, of I know, by the way, like, I'm not that dumb. I know who Drake is, I know who J. Cole is, I know who Kendrick Lamar is, and all those people, yeah. Right. Just to now that's it. cute, that's extra cute. Just so you don't think I don't know them. That's extra, extra cute. It's essentially, right now, it's like a Marvel movie. Yeah. It's like the Avengers have teamed up versus Drake, right? right. So, so the teams are, let me tell you the teams. Okay, go on. So there's a producer called Metro Boomin. Metro who's, Boomin. Who's been like, I would say, the best producer over the last three years. Okay. So he did this Spider-Man soundtrack recently. But apart from that, he's he's just like everywhere. He's done all the best beats for a lot of hip-hop and rap albums recently. He's won all, won all sorts of awards. He's been in the game for a good 10, 11 years, but he started getting his flowers very recently. Mm-hmm. He teamed up, but he, don't forget, he's largely a producer. So he doesn't rap. But he's teamed up with Future. And they... Are on a side with Kendrick, The Weeknd, there's Rick Ross, right? Okay. There's plenty of them, I'd say about seven to eight people on that side, versus what what it was was Drake and then J. Cole. Right. But how this all started, I'll give you some context. So back in the day, I'm talking like 2013 or something, Kendrick Lamar released a track, I think it was called Control. It was a diss track. He just added the whole industry. Drake, you know, literally like 10 to 15 artists, he said, fuck you all. Mm-hmm. I'm the best, right? And ever since then, you know, hip hop has just been in this sort of, there's about three or four artists that are really killing the game. I feel as though, me personally, I feel like Drake's just been there. Then there has been J. Cole, Kendrick's, and f- then your Futures, Rick Cross's. Mm-hmm. And, and, but largely, I think there is also respect for an argument that the big three is Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole. Right. Right. And then it's up to you who you think the GOAT is. Then Drake, in not in his latest project, but in the project before that called Her Loss, he released a lot of tracks which have recently come to light that were subliminal disses. Right. So Kanye West has talked about this. People release diss tracks and just say, yo. So if I release a diss track, yo, Amrit, fuck you. I think you're a bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, Drake's style isn't like that. Right. What he'll do is he'll make a track that only... So if I make a song, only you will know that that's a diss. Right. So for instance, Future is called Pluto. There was a song on that album called What Would Pluto Do? And he's talking about a girl. Should he get with her? Should he not? What would Pluto do? So he's got like obviously inside information on like intimate information that the public don't know. And then he just acts it out. Acts it out. But what happens? So so for instance, when I I actually did a review on that. This is a whole reacts video I done. I reviewed that and I reviewed the song and I was like, yo, he's, he's thinking about messing with this girl. What would Pluto do? Future is a known player in the industry. Gets with loads of girls, etc. So I thought, oh, he's just thinking, all right, it's another girl. What would Pluto do? He'd go for it. So let me go for it. Mm. But in actual essence, he was talking about Future's ex. Right. So Pluto's ex, what would what would Pluto do? And he's like, shall I go for his ex? Mm-hmm. What would he do in that situation? Right. So do you see how it's a subliminal diss to him? Yeah. Because it's only he would know what he's talking about. And, and, and that's he's done that with several people, right. supposedly. That's some more context. Then Drake and J. Cole teamed up on a song called First Person Shooter. Mm -hmm. Teamed up on that song. That song was a banger, by the way. That was only quite recently that came out. And J. Cole had a verse in it where it was all like, oh, the big three, me, Drake and Kendrick. He literally outright said that. J. Cole for the last two years has been coming on loads of features on loads of songs. Just been rapping like I am number one. I'm Muhammad Ali this, that, and the other, like really giving it 10. They're all really fighting for that number one crown sort of thing. Right. Right. Then it comes to this whole Metro Boomin and Future teaming up to make this album called We Don't Trust You. Now, this is what's really got this whole recent fire going. So I've given you the context, given you the old Kendrick track, given you the Drake subliminals. Now we've got this album. Mm -hmm. The industry is like, fuck this guy. 
Yeah. They've teamed up together. Metro and Future. By the way, Future is like boys with Drake. Mm-hmm. So they have loads of number one songs together. Right. They have a joint album together. Right. Which is one of like Drake's best albums. Right. So <sighs> Metro and Future team up on this album. The first song on the album, I was in India whilst this released, by the way, just to give you some more context. Future just outright starts dissing, date, uh, dissing Drake. Fuck you, this, that, and the other. That in itself is quite news. There was another song on the album called Like That. Again, Future and Metro on it, but Kendrick Lamar jumped on for a verse, which in itself is crazy because Kendrick is that guy that drops an album every five years and then you just don't hear from him. Mm-hmm. He's like, and, and this was a surprise drop. There was no marketing that Kendrick's going to be on this or nothing. It just drops. Kendrick's on there. What does he say? He says, fuck the big three. It's just big me. He says, few more lyrics. He says, you're a bitch, this, that. He just, just to Drake and J. Cole, he must have taken that song as a subliminal diss to him. Mm-hmm. Right? Kendrick, I'm talking yeah. about. So that happens. This just breaks the internet like, whoa. Kendrick's not only just dropped a song, but he's, he's dissing Drake. Oh, what's going on here, right? In the meantime, people like Rick Ross, who again, with Drake, have made 10 to 15 songs. For me, that's the best duo in modern mm. rap right like they've made bangers you will know a lot of these songs okay no, Aston Martin music yeah I could name 10 that are just mm. insane right Rick Ross is in his Rolls Royce playing that Kendrick diss bopping to it enjoying it loving it just alright cool we don't hear anything from Drake in response yet but J. Cole drops a surprise album right now we already know he's releasing an, a proper album called The Fall Off but he just releases a completely new project called Might Delete Later Right. One of those songs is an outright diss to Kendrick Lamar. Right. And it's he just goes in on Lamar. It's like people thought it was an okay diss. It wasn't an amazing diss. He was also a bit complimentary, like, oh, your first album was good. This one was your peak. Your last one was trash. It was a bit complimentary of Kendrick. Um, and it felt like his heart wasn't in it. And his heart wasn't in it because two days later, after J. Cole drops this diss track, J. Cole comes out to his fans in Dreamville. So this is... He, his fans will say, like, tomorrow we've got Cloudville, mm-hmm. right? We've got 60,000 people in our arena. We walk out. He addresses the situation to his fans. He's like, yo, guys, what do you think of Kendrick Lamar? I think he's one of the best, this, that, and the other. Straight away, he apologizes. He's like, I think him and Drake are one of the greats. I'm just privileged to be amongst them. He says, I've not been sleeping well the last two nights. Something's just not been right. This energy isn't me. My boys are like, release a diss. You need to do this. I've released it. You know what? We're going to re- delete it from all streaming services. Um, I've got big respect for Kendrick. I want to club with them. I want to club with Drake, this, that, and the other. That Mm -hmm. was just a bit of a moment taken back, like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. First, you release a diss. Then you, like, take it back. But that's not... That was a whole debate in itself. Because hip-hop is known to be competitive. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no one ever really thought at this point that anyone's life is at stake. Like, back in the day, you had your two-pack Biggie going at each other or 50 Cent getting shot nine times. Like, do you know what I mean? That's the history of hip-hop. But this didn't seem like a body was on the line. Yeah. So what, what's your initial thoughts on just J. Cole provoking that at this point? There's still so much more to cover, but I just want to get that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, so I didn't know it was to that extent. I mean, I've always had this perception that J. Cole is somebody who's, like, quite calm. He's, and like, he's a bit like that. It, like, hippie. Calm. Yeah, essentially yeah. a bit hip, and as in like he doesn't get involved with the regular shit. Like, mm. and I've never ever heard J Cole like in a controversial situation. Mm. He's kind of more philosophical, isn't he? That's right. Yeah, so that's he's, right. He's, kind of, he, he's very much the guy that's riding his bike yeah. in the neighborhood with no one around him. Yeah. Whereas Drake, for instance, is the guy that's always rolling with like two teams of security. Yeah. He's very much used to looking over his shoulder. Kendrick Lamar again. He's from the West Coast in America. He's from that school of Snoop, etc. Um, the game, Dr. Dre, where it's like proper gangster era. Mm-hmm. So those two really have that image. Cole doesn't. But the thing is, Cole was rapping for the last two years like he's Muhammad Ali, he's the mm-hmm. best, and he's giving so, it yeah. 10. Yeah, that's what I was surprised about when you said that. I wasn't really quite aware because I thought his whole thing was like kind of calm, mm. more kind of like realistic and on the ground sort of rap and more philosophical yeah. as opposed to like outright just like dissing other people so yeah that's like a surprise to me yeah I've that's heard. always been my perception of call like i've never heard like i've never like i'm not a big fan of any of them yeah so i don't listen to any of them like as such i mean I'll, I'll if it's on i'll listen to it but then that's like my the extent of my knowledge on them mm. and kendrick lamar i thought was similar type of like the similar type of school thought from like joe cole 
So I didn't even realise that they were going at each other in that sense. As in, like, Kendrick, is, he, he does... He's obviously this... He likes to give this gangster impression. Right. But he is very art, artsy too. Yeah. Like, one of the big arguments that people put forward to him being the GOAT is that he's won a Pulitzer Prize. And he's won X many Grammys and nominations, yeah. etc. Right. Um, so that's his case for it, that he's this artsy guy. That, so he's won the Pulitzer Prize? Has yeah. He? yeah. Okay, for he's, what? For... I would need to check exactly what, but he has. Okay, because I thought Pulitzer Prizes are going into, like, um, journalists and stuff. Plenty of Lamar's lyrics reference police brutality, syste- systemic racism, and other political oh, okay, topics. okay, so he's kind of, like, more so... Critics praise his albums, and Damn, uh, the Pulitzer Committee called Damn, just uh, brilliant for placing personal stories within this context of societal So conflict. essentially, like, his storytelling through his music is what he's got the Pulitzer Prize for? Yeah, well, okay. even his latest album, um, that's not regarded by, like the new school by like anything crazy but people that really fuck with their lyrics know that some of the lyrics on that there's a song called auntie diaries where he just talks about how his auntie was trans but in an era that wasn't accepting of trans right and for an artist like that to produce a song like that with those lyrics mm. like you, drake wouldn't do that yeah do you okay. see what i'm saying so he's yeah. that artist yeah that's what i mean so okay so that's why he's on the Pulitzer then, basically, because of the story heading through his lyrics and stuff. So that's kind of, okay. Yeah. They've made like an exception, I suppose, as opposed to like outright reporting. Right. What he's normally given the Pulitzer for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. But he had other songs. Uh, there was during lockdown 2020. He had a song that just, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, it was just like mega viral because it really resonated with the black community. Right. Uh, with BLM, etc. cetera. Right. So he, he's that guy, right? Okay. Um, again, uh, you can see Drake that. Whereas yeah. during lockdown, Drake had Tootsie Slide. Right. Left like foot up, type. right foot down. Da, da, yeah, da. that really annoying sort that of, one. Yeah. Yeah. Where we've got to now, it's not even the craziest part now. Right. A week later, right, Drake's still not dropped his disc by the, at this point. J. Cole has, and he's revoked it. Two days after this, sorry, two days after J. Cole so is on like stage. So it's like, my delete layer is that actually no longer available to like listen to. That song isn't, the rest is. Right. The diss track isn't, but the rest is. Okay. Two days after J. Cole did that, Metro Boomin and Future release a second album. Right. Called We Still Don't Trust You. So the first one, We Don't Trust You, released, has all this. They release another one, We Still Don't Trust You. This time, they bring The Weeknd on. The Weeknd has shots at Drake. Okay. The Weeknd, because there's been long-standing beef between, uh, because they're both from Toronto. Yeah. Drake says, oh, you got your money, but then you fucked off. You're not really about Canada. This, that, and the other. Um, Drake tried to sign The Weeknd back in the day, but right. The Weeknd rejected it. The Weeknd sent shots to Drake. He was like, I'm so glad I didn't sign, because if I did, I'd be making TikToks right now. Yeah. Because there's like, comments about Drake's artists, who he manages. Yeah. They only get the limelight if it's out on a Drake tour, or right. if they make a TikTok. Right. So that, that were The Weeknd's shots there. ASAP Rocky, married mm-hmm. to Rihanna. Yeah. Um, Rihanna, obviously, one of Drake's exes. Okay. Uh, ASAP yeah. Rocky hasn't released ma- music in God knows when. He's just this guy now who's in this like power couple. He's yeah. just a fashion guru. He comes out, he takes shots at Drake. He says, I effed your baby mama before you. Okay. He says, your music's trash, this, that, and the other. So more rappers are seemingly coming out yeah. to just take their shot at Drake. So I don't know what Drake's done to piss everyone off. Mm. Or maybe it's the case that he's just at the top. The money isn't as big in the music game now, but he's making the money. Yeah. And then, I don't, we don't know. Right. That, those two come out. J. Cole has a verse on one of the songs on the album. Okay. J. Cole. J. Cole. Yeah. Who is seemingly one of the few guys that's on Drake's side. Yeah. Has a verse on that same album dissing Drake too. He's not dissing Drake. He just has a verse on it. Right. And is that But like, even yeah. the fact that he's got a verse on Drake's Ops' album, that's fucked. Given... Drake has just finished his North America tour. Literally like a week ago, he did his last show. It was like plenty of weeks long, right? Weeks long. J. Cole toured with him for like 10 of those shows. Okay. So Drake was bringing J. Cole with him. They were playing that first person shooter song on stage. They were doing more collabs that they had. Mm. Drake gave J. Cole his flowers on stage. He was like, yo, he's one of the best artists, this, that, and the other. And now... Obviously, we don't know when J. Cole and Metro recorded that verse together. We don't know those ins and outs, but it's just a slap on the face again. That's fucked. Yeah, to be honest, I I find it hard to feel sorry for Drake anyway, in any regard. Why? I don't know. Like, he's... 
I mean, he, you know, I, I don't know, for me, like, I've never taken to Drake too much. I suppose it's probably, like, a personal choice in that case. So I don't feel too sorry for him. Right. In that sense, as you probably think... I, I, I don't think you need to feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry for him either. Yeah. I just think the whole situation is unreal. I, As in, like, yeah, I mean, it just spices up the whole um, hip-hop scene, doesn't it? So, if anything... Because hip-hop has been a dying yeah. art. Has it? Yes, because there's not been a number one hip-hop album for ages on the mainstream charts Uh, I think I think a year year and a half maybe okay to the extent that country music has become the new trend right because hip hop sort of started as this revolutionary style music yeah against the trend there was some there was a reason to get behind it yeah you know when people like what's his what's his name Ice Cube yeah their group NWA yeah it was like revolutionary like fuck the please fuck the popo yeah there was a message Right. Mm. Whereas hip hop recently has gone down this very trap route, very mumble rap route. Yeah. It's just not the same. And it doesn't get the same attention. Mm. Whereas like But the audience has, has changed as well though, hasn't it really? Like a lot of people are generally a bit calmer, aren't they, than they were like in back in the seventies, eighties and nineties. But especially all- like a lot of like LA and New York has been gentrified as well. To an extent. I mean So you're true like fans of like you know, um, Ice Cube and all them people, they're still there, obviously, but the next generation isn't as crazy, I think, anyway. Well, That's my perception. I could be very wrong, obviously. Well, before hip-hop, it was rock and roll. Yeah. Right? So rock that and roll was, was more like, you knew it, like, rock and roll was more like the white person type of scene, really. My point being, everyone needs that revolutionary style, uh, sorry, rebellious style of music. Yeah. Rock and roll was that drugs, sex, money, that, mm. that mantra, right? And then the, Hip-hop is this mantra. There has been nothing more so like realistic about what's happening in the streets and stuff and like more about like the gang culture. So that was in that sense. Yeah. But then how long does that last? Like how long can you keep it up? So like rock and roll, even now, like have you seen like of a huge rock and roll band like the Rolling Stones were? Like has there been a Rolling Stones ever since? There hasn't. My knowledge isn't up to it. On, on, in Mine isn't either. So I just, I'm just telling you like the Rolling Stones yeah, yeah, were like yeah, the yeah. biggest kind of No, band. I know what you mean. Obviously it's not as prominent as it was. Yeah. And like, so yeah. there hasn't really been like a new band in that sense, which is really taking it apart. Like now you just get like bands, you just get pop groups, don't you? Like, yeah. for example, One Direction, like the last... Well, K-pop's been popping. Yeah, K-pop has been like more of an international, like universal, white, worldwide type of thing. Like there's a huge market for K-pop in not just K-pop in music, but then also like Korean dramas. Culture, in, it, Korean culture in general. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say culture, but more so like Korean dramas and K-pop. Like, so the Korean music and Korean TV yeah. has been thinking that like that's been exported worldwide. Like, there's a lot of like huge culture of it in India, for example, or K-pop, even in the UK. Yeah, generally speaking, everywhere really. Mm. So that's like a different type of genre altogether. That's been popping, but the K-pop is more in line with like pop music anyway. Yeah, the fans of K-pop are fans of like Taylor Swift and all that, like you know, One Direction. Mm. So that's more of like the Gen Z type of listeners, really. That kind of that's tuned a valid into point. That, yeah, yeah, tuned into it. Valid point. Well, I mean, that is why country that, music has been coming in, though. So yeah, like, country music is. I, I, Beyonce, I'm, Beyonce just released a country album, right? Okay. Which is like the next wave. Yeah, uh, Lana Del Rey, another artist that that that's on on that wave. Um, no, but Lana Del Rey has always been on that wave. Like that was her. Like, but some rappers, yeah, have explored the country vibe because right. it's supposedly the next market trend. Okay, I mean to be honest with the country, like the proper country music, I've never like I don't know anybody in that scene. Yeah, like all four yeah, 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 yeah. I I I wouldn't have any idea about any of those but artists. People are fucking with it, man. Yeah, like. Taylor Swift comes from that background, doesn't she? So, yeah. so she's probably one who's kind of popularized a bit more. Yeah. And Taylor Swift is like obviously like the biggest, the biggest. Yeah. Person. Drake one. says she's the only person that can make him delay a release date. Right. See, that's the thing. But I don't get the like. I I genuinely don't get get it. Like I I, I do not rate Taylor Swift as an artist. But that's because I hardly ever listen to her. These Swift, the Swifties are a mob, bro. Yeah. Um, to be honest, you, you should probably you should probably edit this out because we will probably get like. I'd, I'd, I'd be more scared of Swifties than getting cancelled. That's what I mean. So, like, we should probably like delete this part. Might delete later. Yeah. Back to the, back to the beef. You think this is crazy? Rick Ross again, one of Drake's boys. Yeah. This is what you imagine. Ammo comes out tomorrow now mm. and drops a track against you. This is what how you need to like. Yeah, no, I get that, but then get, I'm just saying like it's just spicing up things, isn't it? Like that's all it is. But like but you, it doesn't seem fake. It doesn't seem sort of conjured up mm. to bring this spice because essentially who cares yeah but I never understand this whole beef between artists ever like you don't see it in right well let me explain some more to you now 
right? Maybe you'll understand this. Rick Ross drops his own diss track to Drake called Champagne Moments. Mm. In this, I actually think that diss track is sick. I think it's funny. The outro of Rick Ross's track is funny. In that song, he mentions that Drake got a nose job. Okay. He said that the reason that he's beefing with Drake is because Drake sent a cease and desist letter to French Montana mm. uh, on a song called Splash Brothers or something. Um, those three, Rick Ross, French Montana and Drake, yeah. collabed on Stay Scheming. You must yeah. have heard that song. Stay Scheming. No. Do, 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 do. I only know like that one track uh, from French Montana that, uh, that made it popular. I think it was with Rick Ross anyway. Right. Da, 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 da. Right, that doesn't sound like a, a hip-hop song, mate. No, man, that, that really, like, it went viral. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Not, not enough for me. Yeah, that, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that wasn't with Rick Ross. Was it not? No, no, no. Okay. That was with Sway, something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 that's it, Sway Lee. Sway Lee. That's it, yeah. But, yeah, basically, uh, Rick Ross saying he got pissed off that Drake sent a copyright letter to French, Mont- French Montana... That's why he's beefing with him. He says he's got a, a, a nose job. He's saying he's got a, a, a BBL. He's saying he... Well, men get that too. Yeah, apparently he had like some certain fat percentage and he was trying to remove some fat on his stomach so that he could show his abs straight. No, BBL is like a butt. A BBL is a butt, but, but he's calling it a nose BBL. <laughs> right, okay, okay. Or I was the, thinking like, why do why does a guy get a BBL? Like, Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then okay. um, Rick Ross has... Just also repeatedly calling him white boy. Right. Like, we saying white boy. Like, we brought you into this culture. Bear in mind, Rick Ross was popping in, like, 2006. Yeah. Rick Ross was already on radio, which was the thing back in the day. Mm. Drake didn't really pop till about 2009. Yeah. He said that, you know, Drake, you got your whole flow from Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne, mm. Drake just says outright, he is his, like, mentor and whatnot. He gave him his opportunity. Lil Wayne and Rick Ross are currently in a, a drink venture together and drake's sort of gangster protector was birdman right so you know how like there's always these like record label gangsters so back in the day it used to be a guy called suge knight yeah i know it's in jail now yeah yeah you know p diddy is like a modern day one yeah Um, well yeah that's coming out now actually that's a whole different thing yeah no diddy but yeah birdman i.e stunner he's like this gangster he's the ceo of a record label of cash money records right that brought uh, Drake on, and right, okay, Drake, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, all of these artists, they were under Cash Money. Um, they've just been going at each other like hard, like Rick Ross's story and about Drake every day. Like, yo, where's your response? You've been really quiet. I've got more money than you. Your uh, your your guy's stunner. His house has gone up for foreclosure. What you haven't even got fifty million to save that. It's just like it's crazy. Then Drake comes out with his diss track. He calls it drop and give me 50. And he just goes at everyone. He doesn't even mention ASAP Rocky because he believes that that doesn't even deserve a mention, which I agree with because musically ASAP Rocky is not there. And like the comments about the baby mama with respect, I love Rihanna, but the same could apply. Mm. Right. Then he talks about the weekend. He says, like I said earlier, he says, oh, you're taking shots at me, but you made your money and then you fucked off. You're not really about Toronto and at this, that you're fake, blah, blah, blah. Talks about Rick Ross. He's like, yo, um, this guy's turning 50. What's he playing at? What song is this? A diss track that Drake released. No, no, what, what's it called? Drop and Give Me 50. Drop and Give Me 50. The reason why it's called Drop and Give Me 50 is because Kendrick Lamar's record label that he's signed to, TDE, takes supposedly takes 50% of his makings. Right. And so Drake's obviously sh- taking hot shots at that, that you're getting played by your own record label. Kendrick Lamar's last album was called The Big Steppers. Well, half of it was anyway. He says, how can you be a big stepper if you've got size seven feet? Mm. <laughs> so it's just, he goes in on all of them. Metro to Met, to Future, sorry. he Because uh, Future says, oh, you're my number one fan. He said to Future, how can I be your number one fan? I handed you your first number one. Right. And he did to a lot of these guys, mm. right? Um, to Metro, it was the most disrespectful line I think you could ever. He gave him one sentence. Metro, bear in mind, has made two albums, collabing with Future, bringing all these artists together, done all this work, and Drake just dismisses him, in my opinion, in one line. He just says, Metro, shut your whole ass up, N-word, go make some drums. Mm. And, like, that has just become a viral meme in itself on the internet. 
Drake got a band and sent them to Atlanta, where Metro is from, and he got them to play. There's just all these clips coming out, and just everyone's been trolling Metro since. The internet is going crazy. Mm. Okay. The internet is going crazy. 50 Cent had his two cents worth on this. He says that this light-skinned boy Drake here is killing it. You guys need to step up. I believe there will be more rounds in this. Mm. There was a song for Kendrick that surfaced, like a minute and a half. You need to bear in mind the way Drake's and Kendrick's etc. do this, they get their teams to leak the songs. Mm. They leak and then they release a better version of it. Kendrick's a minute and a half response was leaked. Another whole thing is people don't know if it's AI, people don't know if it's actually the artist. And so this latest Kendrick song hasn't been confirmed, hasn't been rejected as AI. But Kendrick's not owning it as his. Right. It's just, yeah, up up until this point, what's your thoughts? To be honest, I I tried following it as best as I could from that. It sounds a bit interesting, but it seems to me it's not ended yet. No, it's not ended. There'll be more rounds. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately, like you said, it's great for hip hop. It's getting people talking, I suppose. It is getting people talking. I feel like Drake is central to all this. Mm. So like Metro and Future's first album, We Don't Trust You, that sold 220,000 units in its first week. And you have to say it's because of Drake. Mm. The line of Kendrick, that's Kendrick's song. It became number one because of Drake. So he is central to all this. Whether you love him, you hate him, whether he's right, wrong, he is central to it all. Yeah. But it's great for hip hop. Yeah, man. I think that, that's that's just a quick bit on uh, okay. that there. Well, send me these like names of these albums and stuff. I'll give them a listen. Yeah, I'll I'll try it. Go on, you see if I it. like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and see if I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yo, talking of rock stars, from uh, one AP Dillo. Oh, I think you're gonna go on to um, the film we were gonna talk about, but never mind. Which Jim Well, have you watched it? From one goat to another goat, on a, another end of the world. Have you watched it? Yes, and I haven't quite finished it yet because I had to. Like, I haven't seen the last fifty minutes because I basically had to get a train. Right. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it looks amazing, man. Mm. It's so far what I've seen is amazing. And one thing about it, it's like a, it's released straight on Netflix, mm. right? Mm. And it's made by a, a director from Bollywood, essentially like a Hindi cinema, like Imtiaz Ali. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's one of like the the goats within. The industry basically, he I, makes. I, I've seen what he looks like. Yeah, mm. so he's he's genuinely a very good director. He's he's done some really good films like back in the days, uh, like Sochnath, uh, I think it's called. Right. Uh, it was like film that was not done that type of film before, and then also more recently, like he did films like um, Highway. Right. And uh, he did Rockstar. Did you ever watch Rockstar with Ranbir Kapoor? No. So those films that were actually quite big. And they were quite genuinely quite good, especially uh, Highway was a very, very good film. Mm. So to think of him to do Chamkila, which is like completely not his world. Right. Right. He comes from a totally different world to Chamkila. It's like he actually is he's a bit of a Sufi type of guy. Like, you know, and you wouldn't even associate like Chamkila with him. Chamkila has been like, if you don't know, like obviously he was the biggest star in India at the point he was alive. He was... In Punjab, not even India, he was kind of like very grassroots, like level type of singer. He was never, he never made it India nationwide. So he was only like exclusively like performing in Punjab and like people, his core group of fans was always Punjabi people anyway. Mm. And he was killed at the age of 27. And Which is crazy. Yeah. And and like the, the, the thing that made Jim Keela so famous uh, was essentially he broke the trend of like the types of songs he was singing. Mm. So it, Instead of like being, you know, what the Indian culture is like, instead of dressing everything up and like just singing about folk- folklore and all that, mm. his lyrics were extremely dif- different. Right. It was more like, it, it was considered vulgar, yeah. a lot of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd talk about like how basically like the brother-in-law is like staring through the peep, uh, you know, through uh, like, you know, peeping through the bathroom to look at his sister-in-law or something or when the sister-in-law is basically saying like, you know, measure me up and stuff like so. It, it makes sense in Punjabi, basically, yeah, but it was it was basically unheard of and it was extremely controversial. But people were lapping it up. People were loving that. Mm. At least a, a good amount of people. There was always like a group of people saying, "Well, you know, this is not part of our culture. This is disgusting. Mm. He needs to be stopped, etc." Mm. So there was always that debate going on. But generally speaking, he did a lot of akaras, which is like you know the live concerts. You go around to village to village, putting up live concerts and. While he was on the way to one of these concerts in a village, he was actually just gunned down. Right. And and it was never revealed properly. Like, that case was never solved. His wife was with him. He was, like, a duet person. Like, you know, she would sing with him. Amajok, right. 
Amarjot Gaur, like her name was, and she yeah. was also gunned down at the same time, and so was like another couple of people that was with him. So it was it was a mystery that was never it was a case that was never solved essentially a bit like you know Tupac and and now like Sibu Musiwa like, like there's been people saying he was shot because of this he was shot because of that so there's a lot of controversies a lot of like rumors people saying that he was shot basically because a lot of the other singers at the time couldn't take his popularity and stuff there's obviously just saying like a lot of the, you know even like there's some elements of the Khalistani movement being involved, like, you know, the Karkus, they were saying, like, they shot him because essentially he sang dirty songs, he was warned not to sing dirty songs, etc. So there's a whole, that history there. But it was always just, like, central to Punjab itself, and, and you know, so to think, like, somebody from Bollywood, especially from the background that, you know, Imtiaz Ali is from, to, for him to do that film about Chamkila, like, when I first heard about it, mm. I was absolutely shocked. Mm. And I've been waiting for, like, it's been, like, in the news now that there's going to be a Chamkila film for, like, a couple of years now, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, obviously, Diljit was confirmed to do the lead, and then Parinidhi Chopra, who is the cousin of Priyanka Chopra, was the, doing a major role. Mm. So... It then first like transpired as well that you'll see Daljeet actually without his turban because Daljeet has always made a huge thing about not removing his turban in any of the films he does. But then you know what? Like a lot of people have criticised him hmm. for like removing his turban and cutting his hair, hmm. saying that did he know, actually cut his hair for that? Yeah, so his hair is actually cut. And That's I think his he, actual hair. Yeah, yeah. I so, thought he would have just wore a wig or something. No, no, no. But I generally believe. Um, I think anyway, even though he wears a turban, I think his hair was always have, has been cut. Right. So I don't think he actually had full length hair, but he always wore his turban. He's always wore his like bug right to everything. Right. So I'm not hundred percent certain. I'm pretty certain. Uh, obviously, he's never removed his turban before, but I'm pretty certain. Generally, there was like an assumption that his hair is actually cut, but he just wears a turban all the time anyway. Right. Right. So obviously, he removed his turban because he'd always made like a big thing about him not removing his turban for like Bollywood and stuff. But this role, like this, was him telling the story that was close to his heart. Obviously, comes from Punjab comes from that type of lineage of singers and so on so this was obviously very close to home and also i think actually um so Chimkila is actually from like our type of Dwabba. he's like from our area mm. anyways like where me and you are from and then where Diljit is from as well Diljit is been, like a village is quite close to mine actually right. like my like my mom's side of the village and actually my mom's seen Chimkila multiple times he used to come to our village like perform and so my mum actually um, has told me like lots of stories. See, like you know, I would always as a kid go watch him and stuff. And then he'd always warn the women, like be like, okay, I'm gonna start singing these songs now. So it's time for you to go home if you want to go home. So he'd always say this type of thing, right? He'd perform his normal songs, then you know, like the really juicy ones that people came to listen. He'd always say, okay, I'm gonna start singing these songs. You know, obviously, um, yeah, be warned essentially, right? Yeah, it was like a, it was like a. PG type warning type of thing he used to do. Mm. So yeah, uh, um, and then, so he comes from that area, so obviously Diljit will be very involved in that sense. He, he has like, he's probably grown up as a Punjabi singer, learning and hearing a lot about Jim Keen, like, listening to a lot of his songs. So that made sense. And then the fact that he obviously removed his turban, had his hair cut, I think that was like, the type of role that he's never ever gonna get, like that type of, I think that could be a career defining role for Diljit. I don't think he's gonna get the, offered a role which will involve more sort of preparation. There is another film that he's done and it's not been released called about just one Singh Kalra who's like one of the activists back in the 80s who was shot down by the Indian authorities, by the Indian police. That film's actually just trapped in the censor boards right now. They're not releasing, so I don't know if it ever will be released. But these two huge roles that he's played recently, I think that I don't think he's going to get bigger roles than these in terms of like his acting career. Mm. So kudos to him, man, for like really sticking to it and really like pulling through the film. Mm. It reflects like his preparation, his dedication reflects in the work that he's done. Mm. Um, it, it's very realistic. So he sings all of his songs in that like so he sings Chimkila songs, but in his own voice, and, and like he sings them live. Mm. So it's not like auto-tuned, it's not done in a studio. So Imtiaz Ali said everything that was recorded in terms of the music that's in the film was recorded on site, right? right? And you, you even see clips of him, like, you know, behind the scenes, him actually just singing live there and then without any sort of like enhancements. And it just bangs, it just bangs. And he's been doing that, like, you know, in promoting the film as well. Mm. And so like the music within the film is really amazing, mm. right? The second biggest thing about the film, which I was a bit like concerned about and, and I was a bit hesitant about, was the fact that it's obviously done by like a, a, a Hindi film director. So it's, it's not like... It's in Hindi. It's in Hindi, right? So I, I heard Diljit spoke about this. He yeah. said he was hesitant about the fact that it was in Hindi. Yeah. But then the director explained it, but I missed that bit. So maybe... You... So essentially, it's in Hindi, right? Okay, yeah. 
And I now understand the reason behind it being Hindi, and I think I agree with it as well. Okay, what's the reason? Let me see. So he was basically saying like it will reach a wider audience right. if it's in Hindi, and and it does. It does. People that wouldn't have watched it film because there's many Punjabi films on Netflix that wouldn't pop basically because it only reaches a certain amount of audience. It only reaches like Punjabi speaking audience. So trust me, that film works. It does work. I know, but you have to watch it. But. I don't know. I have to disagree because it, it, it's always that oh, Punjabi films don't work until one does. No, until one and does. Do you know what? If you're saying it is this great director, and do you know what? It is Diljeet. Yeah, but it's not that typical. So one Punjabi thing that they did not come from, like, so one thing, a lot of these like you know Hindi films these days in the past like five six years and so on, they've been taking like really like you know Punjabi music that's popped and they've been taking it and they've been kind of like converting it to the Hindi track. Mm. And it's never worked. So one thing that they said, you know, with but with with like Jamkila's songs, the original songs, they're so like to Punjabi, right? It's only like certain Punjabi people. You could be Punjabi and still not understand the depth of those songs, right? Okay, yeah. Mm. So one thing that they did not compromise on was essentially they kept the songs as they were exactly. So they didn't change it into Hindi. And what they've done within the film is they they say these lyrics and they have those like, but then they have subtitles. Along with it, mm. explaining in Hindi what it means and what it's saying, mm. so that was well done. But genuinely, if you watch the film in its Hindi form, it flows really well, and I think it tells the story Maybe really well. Maybe you're missing well. some nu- nuances, though. Punjabi, nuances. not necessarily, because a lot of the times when there are like these certain parents or dama or the words being used, they're, they're completely in Punjabi, right? So you're not missing any nuances. I don't think you are. You watch that film, and you very much get the same type of feel, and they've not. Although it's like a kind of a commercial sort of mainstream film, they've still kept it true to the roots in terms of the grassroots, essentially, and the the language that's been used, the reality that has been shown is ve- feels very real. It's like it, there's a lot of realism within the film. It it doesn't glorify Chimkila, right? I would say it certainly talks about how some of his wrong things, like i.e., like he was married, but then he got married to his duet partner afterwards without telling anybody he was married as well. So they kind of showed that side too, essentially that you know he wasn't all this sort of like happy go lucky type. So it's like a, it's like a real biopic sort of style movie. I think as real as a commercial film can get normally with that type of thing, and it's obviously like targeted a wider audience. And I and I do think it has helped bring Jamkila into the fore and made him more popular within India, as opposed to this. There's been like a, a couple of films that have tried to recreate Jim Kila's life, that have been based on Jim Kila's life. There's a mockumentary called Mesopur. And Mesopur is the place where he was shot dead, basically. Like, it was a pen boy who was shot dead. And there's been, like... There was another one, a Daljeet film, that came out, like, a year last year, called Jodi with Nimrat Kera. So that was never billed as, like, a Jim Kila biopic, but it was kind of more or less inspired, but it was kind of dressed up to be, like, quite rosy and stuff, right? So it was it, it missed the point. Every, everyone's saying and that also starred Daljeet by the way and Daljeet was wearing a pug in that and, and it was a good film don't get me wrong it was a really enjoyable film I went I took my mum to watch it the the Jamkila that is released today like you know on Netflix isn't the type of film that you probably would feel comfortable watching with your mum and dad that's because, exactly what I was going to say yeah. it's just been viral clips after viral clips saying I will never watch a Punjabi film with subtitles again yeah but then no, the, what I'm trying to say to you is essentially because of like that's what I mean the realism in it so it doesn't shy away from his dirty lyrics. But you know what? It is a shame that there was finally a film I could put on with my dad and be like, Dad, do you want to watch this film? But then it just makes it awkward again. Why? Come on, bro. Come on. What do you mean, why? So you want to dress up in high Chimkila's reality and like no, his no, songs? No, no. I, I just want a movie that I can watch with my dad. Why can't I don't, you watch I don't, I don't want some, I don't want a dirty movie that I, I want to watch. If there's dirty lyrics about this, that and the other... There's been but viral clips after viral. Story, but you're not telling a story, though, are you? Then tell me, make another film, make a different, tell a different story. I don't get I, this. I'm not, I'm not saying Jamkila itself. I'm not saying about Jamkila. But the film is extremely important to make. It was extremely important to tell Jamkila's story as it was. You can't dress it up and like his lyrics. Right. No, I'm not saying dress it up. I'm mm-hmm. just saying it's a shame that finally on Netflix there's a big movie yeah. with a Punjabi culture in it. Yeah. That. Finally, there's a movie on Netflix that I could watch on my dad. Okay. I can probably count the movies that I can watch with my dad on Netflix on my, on my hand. Right. Right. But I can't because everyone's telling me I shouldn't. Because Why? Of the, because of the subtitles. The subtitles? What do you mean? Yeah. That they're just really dirty. What I'm trying to say to you is like, yeah. the reason you can't watch with your dad is you're saying basically because it has a lot of like vulgarity within it, right? Is that what you're saying? 
As in, I'm just saying it's a shame that there's finally a Punjabi movie that I can maybe watch with my dad, but I can't because there's a lot of vulgarity. Yeah, but then that's what Chumkilla's life I know, was. I know. So I'm saying it's a shame that movie is Chumkilla. But that doesn't... But do you see... Like that point? movie could have been on Milka Singh or something instead, or I don't know, another one. There has been a film on Milka Singh. There has, but it's not at this moment in time. No. So all I'm saying is this moment in time, it's a shame for me that there isn't another movie I can just watch with So you, essentially, you're, what you're saying is you want a good quality Punjabi film. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. but we're not really talking about that. that's a whole different topic. Not really, because it's a good quality is, Punjabi no, film, right? No, but then what I'm trying to tell you is like this film was extremely important because it introduces Chumkila to the wider in- audience in India mm-hmm. and also internationally, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're going to tell Chumkila's story, you can't dress it up because that wasn't real Chumkila. Real Chumkila was talking about like, you know... Yeah. Um, no, I get it. I get. It. I'm not. I'm not disregarding the importance of the film. I'm just saying, for me personally, mm. it's a shame that it's not a film that I could watch with my dad. Okay, but then I think if your dad does watch it, yeah, he no doubt will have been a fan of Jumkila when he was younger. No doubt. If you ask your dad, he'll probably say no to you. But generally speaking, everybody loved him. No, he knew of him. He wasn't a fan because my dad wasn't into music like that. Right. But my mum, I didn't even know this, has actually seen all the... Day. Like, she's, she said to me, like, you know, when we went to watch Jodi, mm. right, essentially, mm. I didn't tell her that it was based on Jamkila. So we were watching the film. She was like, oh, you know what? These songs are very much like Jamkila's. Yeah. So she was recognising this, right, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, And then, obviously, when they get shot in the end... Yeah. And she was like, oh, this is what happened to Jamkila. And then she was like, oh... And then I told her, like, oh, this film is meant to be based on Jamkila. But that film was very dressed up. I know, I remember. I remember. Right? I remember. Going from Jamkila, we need to talk about A.P. Dillon. Yeah, what a waste, then. I don't know why you're going to go talk from Jamila to a beat and low man. Yeah, but he's back in the headlines, bro. We've been, talking about, guitar, we've been talking about rock stars all podcast. Maybe maybe that's what the headline's going to be in the, on the thumbnail, yeah. But this rock star, he performed at Coachella, which is no... You can't take that away from him. Yeah, but then I didn't see... Second the, the, Punjabi artist. Yeah. The Jeet set the wave last year. But I didn't see much about it that much. Coachella's been dead, generally. Yeah. No one cares year. about Coachella this year. Mm. So, a beat and was there, though, doing his thing. He did, there was one thing he put... I didn't even know it was going on this year, as I said, like, it was very low-key. Let's start with a little positive. He did put uh, R.I.P. Sidhu Musiwala on, on a big screen. So he shouted out Musiwala and he was, you know, bringing, again, yeah. to a wider audience, as you might say. He was bringing a lot of attention there. But he had a guitar. It was like an electric-style guitar. Obviously, he's feeding himself. I, I, I was cringing at that moment when he breaks, smashes You're cringing at everything he does. But he gets his guitar, he smashes it on the ground yeah. three or four times. It's more so like, you know, rock and roll stars that end their concerts with like that act of like sort of rebellious Do violence. you think that suits the Punjabi culture though? Because there has the point it, we it, made that no, you need to respect your instrument. Yeah, but then also it, it's totally out of line with the type of songs he does, like lyrics he sings. He doesn't do these type of like... Like, say, if Sudhu Musiala was dating, like, his music's always kind of, like... A bit more hard-hitting, pump. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, you know, Dillon's like... Ah, like, you know, it's like soft lyrics, soft music, and all, like, you know, slow beats and all that. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. influenced by, like, the sort of hip-hop sort of Western music. Yeah. It's totally, totally out of character with the type of music he does, that act of rebellious. So I think it's just attention-seeking and, like, trying to be somebody or trying to act cool. That's my take on it, generally, and it, and it made me cringe when I saw him do it. He's like, oh, uh, what did he say at the end? Like, um, I'm, I'm a pretty law or something. And then he walks off. And he tries to do that dramatic sort of exit. But it, it, you're just thinking, man, and yeah, yeah, like, what the fuck? Who the fuck are you, man? You know what I mean? It's like, go back to your, like, you know, soft singing little voice. Why do you hate him so much, man? I, I, he's so fake. Honestly. <laughs> he's so fake. Why are you like, yo, you're ruining any chance of us ever getting him on the pod? I think he will probably should come on the pod and be like, listen, Amr, this is why you're wrong. <laughs> but generally speaking, it's out of character of the image he tries to create, or like of his music and stuff, through mm. his music. Like, if somebody like got an orge, like, you know, who talks about like fights and all, like, you know, blood and all that, yeah, and revenge and guns, drugs and all that, right? Yeah, with Sidhu Musa, like, it's more in line with their images to like, you know, this act of rebellion or like this act of violence. But with him, you know, the types of songs he does, it's totally out of, like, out of place. Mm. Mm. Yo, there's one thing I need to do. I don't know if you've heard of a show called Shogun. Yeah, I think so. Oh my gosh. Shogun, yeah, is the other thing that's been distracting me from this whole rap beef. Like, this rap beef, yeah, has Shogun, had me... Shogun, like, what, what, where is it on? It's on Disney. Right. And it's a show, it's Japanese, it's in Japanese. Okay. And it's it's about back in the day. 
And it's very much like before, like civilizations were. Right. Can I just ask you one thing, Naya? Here, I will not go into the history of me watching these international cinemas or films and movies and TV series, and you like, oh, you're we, never going to understand it. Can I ask you one thing? Are you watching it with subs or are you watching it in dub? What do you mean, watching it? Are you with watching subtitles, of course? And not dubbed. I never watch anything dubbed. Right, okay. When have I ever watched anything dubbed? I'll, I'll, you're the type of person that would. Oh, shut the fuck up, Henry. Okay. I've learned Spanish watching Narcos. Right. Right. I can speak more Spanish than your little fake ass. Oh, that's cute. You watch, you watch Punjabi movies in Hindi, mate, so let's not go okay. into dubbing, okay. right? <laughs> okay, but I'll anyway, go. Shogun is fire as fuck. Right. It is, literally. You know that emoji? Mm-hmm. Right. It is so good. The acting, I'm telling you, when the Emmys come are, around... Are you, are you getting all the nuances of the show and all that? Are you getting all the picking up the little things and all that? You... I'm not. Right. I'm, I'm, no, so I'll, how are you I'll enjoying stand it? That, I'll stand by that know? point. A Japanese person watching that show mm-hmm. understands a lot more than me watching it. Yeah. Obviously. And you watching it. But, but then, see, there you go. No, no, no. Obviously. Yeah, but then are you still not enjoying it? Are you still no, not getting the point? I am. So but, why would you not let that rest with me then? When I used to say that to you. Do you know I'm, what? Because this is done so well. Whereas what you watch is some little blurry shit ass thing on a dodgy link on no, your laptop. When I tell you Iranian films are is literally the best cinema out there. And you were like, but I'm right. How do you say that? Like, oh, this can't be possible. Da, 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 da. We'll, we'll retouch this another day. Yeah. We'll retouch this. But back to Shogun. Shogun, right. It's, it's Game of Thrones-esque. Mm. In the sense that... There's nine episodes released so far. Yeah. I've been watching them the minute they come out. Right. And there's one more to go. And I'm so sad to learn there's not going to be a season two, three, four, five. Right. So that, I, I was so fucking pissed when I heard that. Because episode eight was like rated like a 9.1. Okay. Episode nine was really rated like a 9.7. Right. And when I say when it's rated 9.7, it warrants that 9.7. Okay. And it's like... I don't know, man. I don't know how to sell it to you, but Shogun is... You need to watch it. Sure. It's a bit slow, mind you. It takes time to get into it, learn all the characters. But yeah, when I was saying, when the Emmys come around, those actors are going to be winning. The acting levels are high. Like You yeah, can really watch it. Because if it's not like an international produced type of show, mm. like... Okay, it'd be interesting. Well, I'll, I'll watch it. Mark my opinion. words. Yeah. Yo, a uh, quick word on... Um, Yo, did you see the whole Cole Palmer incident? Yeah, the penalty. The penalty. That's mad. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah, that's stupid. That was crazy, bro. I saw that. I saw Sky Sports headlines. I thought they were doing their usual, just big it up as much but as they can. this was like but fucked. Yo, this was fucked. This I was serious. Clip. I was like, Rah. There was the one that player that was just like, firstly picked up the ball, mm. would not give it back. So that it was, so it was Madueke and Jackson. Yeah. So you know th- what this remind? this was on the level with, you know, Kepa when he wouldn't come off. When he wouldn't come off. That 100% was, you're right. It, this was that, that level of fuckery. Yeah, yeah, it was that level of fuckery. Yeah. And if I was the manager, I would fucking slap him in the changing room. Who would you slap? Both Meroveku and uh, Jackson. They're in the wrong in your opinion. 100%. Okay, your team has is winning 5-0, yeah. 5-1 or whatever. But listen, it's this not, boy has already scored two goals. Three by that point. He had already gotten his hat-trick. He had already gotten his hat-trick. Yeah. Right. But listen, it's decided the penalty taker is him. Okay, but right. but what about the fact that there's a lot of positive vibes brewing finally for Chelsea? But then who does he give it to? Does he give it to Medovaki or uh, Jackson? Give it to any of them? No, not any of them because they're both fighting for it. Okay, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's a lot of glitch on the pitch, yeah. Over the, that. Well, well, the other point is, the other point is, he's joint top scorer in the league with Haaland. Yeah. He's going for the golden boot. Exactly. I understand it from that perspective. No, but then the biggest perspective that you need to understand it from is the fact that he's like, he is the kind of the penalty like he's the no we, like, I understand that Amrit but it's not like, like it. Bruno's the designated penalty taker but to boost Rashford's confidence he, he lets him take it yeah but then here it was obviously it meant a lot to him and also I think one point that Deli Ali made in the uh, in his like post analysis was that the fact that when it was like 3-4 like to you know against United and there was a penalty none of those players had the balls to step up mm. and ask them look I'll fucking take the penalty yeah, so they didn't Palmer. want to take it in a pressure situation yeah but here when you're winning and everything's on Kadori. You know, you think I'll get on the act. Fuck off. You get your own fucking goal, innit? But Cole Palmer was a bit of a prick for that. I you don't think he was. I, I do not... I would... I, I'm not, like, huge on Cole Palmer. I don't think... I, I don't... He's a great player. He's a great player. Well, I don't know. He's had a good season. Don't get me wrong. He could he could flop next season just as much 
right? He d- it doesn't matter. He just needs to be good in summer. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I suppose so. But then also, like, he's obviously solidified his spot in the England squad. And well, you say that, but I saw a BBC Sport article today saying Bellingham and Cole Palmer fighting for the number ten. No, sorry, that was Foden. Yeah, Foden and Bellingham. So I don't think 10. he's starting, but he's on the plane. I don't know if he's. I in think the team. he should be starting. I don't know. I think he should be starting. I don't know if he if he's been really that good or he's just been a better. Or he's been like good. In There's a been a really, lot of penalties. No, as in like he's if he's just been good in like a really shit Chelsea team. Like a lot of those players. If, in you're, that, if you're good in a shit team, then you're no. You're as in like you're, 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 he's the team. only one scoring goals, I suppose, for them. And then a lot of them have been like penalties and stuff. Fair enough. Whatever. A goal is a goal, mm. right? But I do not think he was in the wrong here at all. You can't mm. argue otherwise, man. Those two players, they should get slapped up. If I was Pochettino, I would fucking. Well, he walked out of the conference. He was pissed. Yeah. That's the first time I've seen him pissed. Yeah, and and like I, I honestly would would punish them both because that was like you know washing your la- dirty laundry in public, man. Honestly, that was that was really. Well, it was, a, it was a, it was a wrong headline to take away from a solid performance. Yeah, six 0 Nobody's talking. You're about talking that of anymore. Chelsea. Did you see the angry rant, man? He passed away, man. Or the guy from Bang- there is no passion. Oh, has he passed away today? Fuck, that's fucked. No way. What a guy, man, yeah? Shit. I mean, he, he's you know what? He's like an OG football, like, International viral football. clip yeah, yeah. maker. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, he reached, like, Africa, Asia, everywhere. He was huge in the UK. Was, was he from Bangladesh? I'm not sure. But he passed away today. His family released a statement on his Instagram. And that is crazy. Chelsea fan. So I thought I'd give him, give him a shout out, man. Shout out to you. No way. Like, does it say how he passed away? No. No details of that yet, but I'm sure, obviously, it's not the right time right now, but mm. they'll come out in due course. But Bloody hell. Last but I not least... I feel like Chelsea owe him a bit of a, a, a tribute. tribute. Yeah. Mm. Last but not least, yeah, Chubby Alonso. Guy's a legend. He's a legend, man. I think if Chubby Alonso obviously going to win the Europa League as well, I, I, I'm i pretty certain he will, <clears throat> right? And I think he's going to do the treble... With Bayer Leverkusen, if that's not the right time for him to leave, I don't know what ever will be. Because he's not the he's not going to spend his whole career at Leverkusen, right? That's a given. Well, Leverkusen have come out today and already said Javier Alonso will be going to Real Madrid, one hundred percent. It's just when. Yeah. But I think so. There you go. There's your there's your there's your answer. Yeah, but I I think not if, Liverpool, but buddy. I think you know that anyway. But no, yeah, no, no. But I genuinely the think podcast. the trajectory that he should take it is lit. I think. Real Madrid is like the culmination of every player, every manager, right? Yeah, generally speaking, biggest club in the world. But the only problem, like Real Madrid, don't get me wrong, they've even got that star boy, Endrick, recently, yeah. who is a baller. Real Madrid are stacked now, finally. Like, post-Ronaldo, this is the first time I think, yo, they are there. Mm. And Carlo Ancelotti manages the ego as well. The problem is, next summer, Mbappe's coming. Yeah. And Mbappe's still doing his thing in the Champions League. He took Paris through, man. Yeah, I, I I don't see him going to Madrid straight away. I'll be extremely... Mbappe? No, I'm on about Alonso. Oh. So really, if not Madrid, it leaves him with... No. Honestly, I think just Liverpool. Mm. Oh, slam <laughs> it. Give it a rest, man. He's not going to Liverpool? Now, after Klopp, is going to be the best time to take over Liverpool for any manager. It would have been, but he's not going. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Although I don't, I don't think it's I a hundred pain. By the way, uh, what happened to the quadruple? It's okay. It's not. <laughs> it's not. What's wrong with it? What's right? Like, I, like it's okay. Uh, you know what's beautiful? Liverpool and Arsenal. You both lost. Yeah. On the weekend. But there's one point between the three teams. So, <laughs> City have got Tottenham away. I'm but certain. Liverpool just looked defeated. Yeah. And in, and in Jamie Radnap's words. Liverpool legend. He said it's just the United game took it out of Liverpool. Yeah. They've not been the same since. It, they haven't. You're welcome. Yeah, no, they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that loss against Crystal Palace was like, oh, I didn't even watch that game because I didn't watch it. I love it. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm going to head off then, yeah? All right, yeah, no, I think that it, that's a great time because we have covered everything. Listen, guys, um, thank you for all the support on recent episodes, man. You lot are killing it. But do you know what? I'm not seeing enough comments. Why are you not commenting? Comment on the video. See you later. Bye.